Okay, welcome back. I hope this comes through okay. I'm going to have to check this, of course, obviously. But what I want to do is to talk about capacitor charge and discharge. And uh, you would have, you, if you look at my videos, you may have seen that I've done something similar to this previously. But what I wanted to try and do was to add to that if I can and expand on it a little bit more. Okay, so capacitor charge discharge. Okay. Now, a capacitor is an electronic component that can store an electrical charge. Unlike a battery that stores electrical charge through chemical reactions, the capacitor holds electrons on conductive plates separated by an insulator. Now, you would have seen this on one of the videos I did previously. But what we wanted to do was to expand a bit more on that and to look at the calculations that actually goes into making these graphical representations or doing the calculations of charge and discharge by a calculation method. Now, capacitors are present in numerous electronic circuits. They are also gaining attention recently as a possible means of supplementing batteries in electric cars. Now, you can see already here that we are looking at means of providing electrical energy in for electric cars. And this was probably looking at some at this some time before electric cars became even mentionable at the point in time. This experiment explores how capacitors can be charged and discharged. Now again you would have seen the one of the experiments or the calculations or diagrams I've shown you in one of the videos but what I felt then at the time was that um, the videos was done a little bit too quickly and um, I don't think I gave enough time to an explanation so what I've done now is to revamp this and to look at it again to make sure that those of you who have an interest in electrical or electronics becomes more way now you need to look up additional information for yourself look at how these circuits are presented by other people on the internet or in electrical principles okay and you will find a lot of this in electrical principles quite easily to, to hand. Now, what I want to look at is what do you need to do, do this circuit? Now, you need 1000 microfarad, microfarad capacitor, you need a 50k kilo ohms resistor. Note other capacitor resistor combinations that can work. Are listed in one and three hyphen one okay that's only a list giving you variations on the circuit okay dc voltmeter or multimeter configured as a voltmeter and you may need two of these okay now i can't show you what my multimeter looks like at the moment because it's too far away at this point in time but i'm going to try and do that at the end okay DC amp meter again using your motor meter as one as set to amp meter. Uh, three knife switches, switch one, switch two, and switch three. Jumper wire. Now, this could be uh, the cabling that you would use for a telephone system. It is that same, it is that fine a wire. Okay. Uh, stopwatch with second hand stopwatch or watch with second hand and two LEDs okay. 
Now there is possibility that to have missed something out on here with regards to my diagram. Because it says here now two LEDs. The circuit diagram only shows one LED if I remember correctly. So do forgive me for that. Okay. I was trying to simplify it, but in doing so I needed to amend the text as well. So I do apologize on that part. Okay. Now let me the type of board that you would use to build this on would be this board. It would be a breadboard. Okay, and that's what you would normally be using to build your circuits on a breadboard. This allows you to build the board and just take it down as you at your ledger. Okay? It's not permanent, but it sets the framework for you to show you how it can be done. Okay? Let's just make sure that we have all this online, okay? Mm -hmm. And again, here's what you need. Okay. Method charging. Okay, let me just go back a little bit. Now this is the circuit that we have that you need to build using your breadboard okay you notice that it's black on one side and it has your connection on the other side okay and that's what your circuit would look like now please note this is your resistor okay that it's an old style diag diagrammatical resistor but you know these days that it's just now a square or rectangle, rectangular shape for your resistors now. Okay, that is your LED. And the mistake of, I think I've made here probably is that um, I've left out one of the LEDs. I should have put them in, but um, I was trying to simplify the circuit. But the principle remains the same. Okay. Once you follow it through, it remains the same and it's, uh, it gives you a bit of something to do anyway yourself rather than letting me do everything for you, okay? Okay, that's your diagram. Now, here we have circuit for studying capacitors, uh, your resistor, switch 2, switch 3, switch 1, okay? And by switching the circuit in different manner mannerisms, it allows us to charge or discharge the capacitor. Now, here, this is just a standard capacitor. It's non-polarized. Okay, this is a non-polarized capacitor. But what we would ideally like here is a polarized capacitor. So what we're looking at here would be an electrolytic type of capacitor. In this case here. Okay, so I would change this for an electrolytic capacitor of the same value. Okay, that gives us more definition in regards to polarity. Now. Set up the circuit shown in figure 103 hyphen. Pay attention to the positive and negative polarity markings, especially if your capacitor has a designated positive side. Some do and some don't. Start with all switches open. Okay. Close switch two, leave open switch three. Now close switch one and start the timer. Record the current in milliamps every five seconds. This is easier with partner. Okay. If you miss a reading, keep going and catch the next five seconds interval. Keep going until the current becomes too small to read. 
Now, if all the capacitor resistor combinations are used at different time interval, then five seconds may be more appropriate. Okay. Now again here, remember that this is only a overall free view. Okay, it will change depending on what kind of circuit you have, what kind of capacitors you're going to use, what kind of resistors you're going to use. In this case, we're using uh, a 1000 microfarad capacitor, okay? So allow for those changes. Do not assume, do not take this as being fixed or red. It is variable. Discharging. When the charging part is complete, open all switches. Close switch one and leave switch two open. Close switch three and start timer. As before, record the current in five second intervals. Now, the expected results. With switch two closed, the capacitor will charge. LED two will light but slowly fades as the voltage builds and the current flow decreases. Now this is where I've made the error of just using one LED rather than two. So here again, I do apologize, okay? For the 10K resistor and the 1000 microfarad capacitor given in the parts list, the charging will be about two thirds complete in 50 seconds. I've shown in figure 103-2. Okay. Now switch three. Close, the capacitor will discharge as indicated in figure 103 hyphen 3 after the 50 seconds. The voltage will have dropped from 10 volts to to around 3.7 volts. LED 3 will light and will slowly fade as the capacitor capacitor discharges. Now please note I've used a single LED, so LED 3 will still be the same. LED as before it's just that it will be switched into a different switch position which will give us this effect now again do some additional research for yourself do not just take this as red look up what how other um, I should say tutors or information on the internet in regards to charging channel of capacitors has been given so you get a wider knowledge and a wider experience in regards to the work okay now here we have the diagram which is showing us here is 10k resistor now you can see here that the charge it reaches full voltage in regards to the 1000 microfarad capacitor in about approximately 40 seconds okay and when we use the 50k resistor it takes all this time to charge to reach a maximum in about 120 seconds okay so you can see by using a smaller with value resistor the capacitor will charge quicker And capacitor charge voltage versus time for a 1000 microfarad capacitor charging through 10, 10k and 50k long resistors and you can see the differences here this is the one that we normally look for but normally we're looking for a charging rate of approximately not 20 to 30 seconds okay if not even faster sometimes
and here we have the the effect of volts again of the capacitor charging and discharging and you can see here in regards to the 10k resistor it drops and discharges in about 60 seconds here again the 50k is taking all this time to discharge again in 120 seconds you'll notice here it takes almost the same time to discharge as it took the, the 50k to charge up okay so by changing the value of our resistors we can change the rate of charge or discharge in respect of our capacitor and our c t equals c times r Now, in general, <coughs> excuse me. In general, the time to charge or discharge two thirds of a capacitor of capacity is characterized by the time constant for capacitor C in farads and a resistor R in ohms. The time constant T or tau in seconds is given by T equals R times C. Now the time constant represents the time where the current during charging or the voltage during discharging has decreased by about two thirds. Now, the following combinations of resistors and capacitor tape 103 1 give a reasonable time constant of 30 seconds, which gives measurable results in this experiment. Okay, now remember that although we're just looking at an experiment or information in regards to an experiment, the time constant in 30 seconds, we may need a capacitor to operate and discharge in a quicker time than this sometimes we may need to charge up to in five seconds okay so you, you will see that changing the resistor value will allow us to change to charge a capacitor faster or slower and there is our table okay one of three and that this is purely for example only okay it is not fixed okay we, we could change these values here basically okay? why it works the current for a charging capacitor is given by i equals i now o now remember i o e to the minus t over r times c okay now again look up these formulas on the internet or look them up in your electrical principles book there are quite some good books on the on regards to charging the charging of capacitors and you need to be familiar with this because if you're doing engineering mathematics you will be doing engineering mathematics at a level okay there's no shortcut observation to this that's why if you come in going into math into electrical or electronics they will always ask you 
for your mathematical grades at school. If you haven't, if you've got less than a C, then you need to be doing some work for yourselves, and a lot of work for yourselves. Okay. Sorry about that. Now the voltage for a charge in capacity is given by V equals V O open brackets 1 minus E to the minus T over R C. Okay. The current for a discharge in capacitor is given by I equals I O E to the minus T over R C. The voltage for a discharge in capacitor is given by V equals V O E to the minus T over RC and what I've tried to do here is to provide some examples as to how these calculations would be carried out or be looked at so I've taken some time out hopefully to make this possible and I, I can only hope that you find it useful now remember you need to apply these formulas in each case so let me just go back up to make sure you, we got you got them all in okay Okay. Okay. Again, just recap, the voltage for a discharging capacitor is given by V equals V O E to the minus T over R C. When T equals the time constant R C, then E to the minus T over R C equals E to the minus one equals 0.37. Now, you will find that the value of E to the minus one is equal to 0.37. Now, if you punch it in on your, on your calculator, now this is my calculator, okay? It's a bit old, battered but you'll see it's a Casio type calculator, okay? And you will find that E has a value and that value is, is a set value. So depending on your calculator, learn how to use your calculator and enter the correct information. Don't get me wrong, I had to learn how to use this as well myself and I've practiced this. So it just here is where my E, in, on this calculator is where my E is, okay? And I've got to use shift. And e to the let me just see e to the x okay but your calculators some of you guys got some super calculators which does the thinking for you but it's important that you are able to think for yourself to know how the calculator got the in, the answer okay so let me just go back up recap that a little bit for you okay and uh, okay, and just recap. Okay, when t equals the time constant RC, then e to the minus t over RC equals e to the minus one equals 0 0.37, okay. and that is your value for that. Now this means a discharge capacitor has dropped to about one third of its original value or has discharged about two thirds. Okay. Again, do some additional research for yourselves. Make sure that the information that you are being given is correlates to what you come to understand in regards to additional information which is given out there okay do not take it just as read now here's where I've gone into doing some calculations for myself let me see if I can make this any bigger, a bit bigger. Can I make it a bit bigger? Um, let me just see if it will accept it. One second, bear with me for a moment. Let me just see if I can make this a bit bigger. Will it give me, or oh, is it too big? Yeah, 
Yes, it's a bit too big now, so let's go back to 100, 150. Okay. All right, yes, thank you. Okay, we can go with that, I think, yes. Yes, okay, that's better. Okay, what I've done here is that um, I've gone into look at DC transients. And of course, that's what charging the charging capacitors relates to transients of DC. Charging and discharging of a capacitor. Now, the instantaneous values of voltage V. Now, please note that's my V. This is just my handwriting, okay? That's a V, okay? And current I can be read from a graph. If you plot the graph, current, against time and voltage against time now somewhere along the lines i've done these principles already previously in one of the videos but i did not actually go through it in a finer detail as i've done now and i think it's important that you understand the concept but again do some additional research for yourselves some additional work we are going to use calculations Okay, rather than a graphical method. Now here, instantaneous PD across C is is VC. Again, that's a V. VC equals V equals one minus E to the minus T over CR. Okay. Now instantaneous current. instantaneous current I equals I to the E minus T over CR. Now the instantaneous charge Q little q equals Q open brackets 1 to 1 to the minus E minus T over CR close brackets okay and a similar process for each of these as I've said before uh, open brackets, close brackets. This is the formulation that you need to apply in any case when you come to do or to look at the voltage or the current respectively. Okay. Now, time constant T for series RC circuit. The quantity CR in the in the above. Well, here that that is that. Okay, so it's just the way I happen to say it first. But above form is called the time constant. Okay, it determines how quickly VR and VC approach their final values. Okay. Time constant equals CR. Consider the point where the instantaneous time t, and I've called this little t, okay, just for my own point of reference, equals the time constant t, and I've called this little uh, big t, okay? Now from VC equals V and using this formula, we have VC equals V1 minus minus E to the minus 1. Okay. This becomes this. So we have 1 divided by E. So VC equals V1 open brackets 1 minus 1 over E. And V equals 1 minus 0 0.3679. Now, on my calculator, it's giving me at 0 0.3679, but this could come out to on some people's calculator as 0 0.3678. 
Okay, so a low further factor. Um, I tried to examine why it came out as 0.3679, but it just still, still came out as 0.3679. Okay. And you should then find that the voltage will always come out to something like 0.632 volts. Now here I've put E equal 2.718. So if we divide one by 2.718 equal 0.3679. And that's what I got. Okay. Now I've put this here as additional information. I have no idea why. It was just something that occurred to me while I was doing the calculations. So again, bear with me, okay? E should be a constant. Now again, from this, the time constant can be defined as the time taken for the voltage across the capacitor to rise to 0.6321 of its final steady value. Again here, they have put 0.6321, I've just simply leave it as 0.632, uh, okay. Now the initial growth of the capacitor voltage would be voltage equals V over T equals V over C times R. Let us look at an example. And I've gone here, let us look at an example. The capacitor of 5 microfarads is to be charged in series with a 0.4 megaohm resistor from a 100 volt supply okay now time constant t equals c times r equals 5 times 10 to the minus 6 times 0.4 times 10 to the 6 and that's equal to 2 seconds or what i've done here is to show you what 0.4 is equal to in regards to megaohms therefore it would be 5 times 10 to the minus 6 times 400,000 ohms equals 2 seconds. Make sure you put this into your calculator and you get the values given. Okay, you cannot take these values as red. You need to know, recognize how to put this into your calculator so you get the correct answer. Some of you have problems using your own calculators or recognizing what the functions are for on your systems okay get familiar with it get to know it make it your own the initial rate of growth of capacitor voltage voltage equals v over cr and here we have that again put this into your calculator and it will come out to 50 volts per second so for every second that passes your capacity is charging up at 50 volts per second Now initial charging current, I equals V over R, okay, 100 ohms, my apologies, forgive me for that, initial charging current is I equals V over R equals 100 volts over 0.4 times 10 to the 6 ohms, equals 2.5 times 10 to the minus 4. 0.025 amps or 0.25 milliamps okay and you should get arrive at one of these answers on your calculator depending how your calculator functions okay. now the potential difference across capacitor bc equals v 1 minus e to the minus t over cr and here i've gone i've brought this down divide the 4 by 2 again please note this is just my process as to how 
my to bring it to a mannerism that I can understand in concept. I don't know whether that would help you in any way or not, but for me, that's what it's saying to me, okay, overall. Okay, so I made a little note of that for so called it might help some people. Okay, now 100, 1 to the minus e to the minus 2. That becomes 100, 1 minus 1 over e to the plus 2, or 1 minus e, 1 minus 1 over e to the 2, because the plus is only trying to tell us that it's a positive rather than a negative function. So here, the plus didn't really matter. Not when I did it on my calculator, it made no difference to, to the value at all. But this was just put in place to denote a positive function. Now, what you then get is 100, 1 minus 1 over 7.389. Now, 7.389 on my calculator, but it's possible that um, you might get 7.388. Okay, but again, I will leave that as is because it did not make that much difference to the actual outcome of the voltage. Now, and when we divide that by that, we get this, and then one minus this value gives us that value there, 0.8647. We multiply this that by that, it gives us 86.47 volts. Okay, so we now know the potential difference across the capacitor is 86.47 volts, right? The fraction change here is so minimal, it has made very little difference. But I have to make sure that everyone recognizes that and to accuracy as such. Okay. Now we then need to know the current flowing after four seconds. So here we are current flowing after four seconds okay are we going with i equals i e to the minus t over cr 0.25 e to the minus 4 gives us 0.25 e to the minus 2 because we divide the 4 by 2 that gives us our values here we then have e i equals 0.25 times 1 over e to the plus 2 or e to the 2 Let me use the same values here, okay? No point times, now you're multiplying, okay, one divided by that. Now, it's all very well trying to do this all in one go, okay? You can, but it's understanding the stages that we go through to arrive at a final solution, and that is what matters, okay? And that's what I found useful to me when I was in college myself. Now, the, the, the lecturer always gave me what I thought was matched answers. I mean, how did you get an answer without doing, showing me the mechanics as to how you arrive at that solution? And that was one of the things that puzzled me the most. So I tried to show the long-winded process and the mechanical element that goes into making up and arriving at a given solution. Okay. And here you now have, once you divide that by that, that gives you 0 0.1353, again, 0 0.0338 milliamps. Okay. And uh, that, that'll be it for us, thank you. I'm just going to take a stroll up, just make sure that everything has been covered. Okay. Come back a little bit so we can get everything in. Okay.
I'm done with your thank you, I think. Okay. Just to ensure that we have covered everything and that everything is in short and that I have not missed out anything in regards to the information that I'm trying to, to convey. Okay. Now don't forget to use your breadboards where possible and it's only fine wire you can use. It's not special wires at all. Or you know that if you have a doorbell, you know that the doorbell wire cable that they use for that, that will do smartly for your breadboards that doesn't mean say so that you go and take off the cable from your bell door okay that's not what I'm saying at all it simply means that you've got to go and buy bell wire on, on the wheel from your nearest uh, electrical wholesalers and you'll find that that will do the job perfectly right thank you I hope that will be useful to you have a good day bye bye